All right, welcome everybody to your Healthy Self Podcast. This is your host, Kate Archibald, and so, so excited to be here with everybody today. Um, I am up in in uh, Alpine, and Reagan, you made it just in time. Perfect. I thought Reagan was going to be a, a little bit late today, but he made it yeah. right on time. He, he knows how to make his schedule work, this guy. Um, <laughs> So uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Hopefully you all had a really, really uh, great hack last night. So if you're not a part of our Health Accelerator course, make sure you get into that. That's uh, AccuEastWest forward slash hack, H-A-C. And that is where we take you through um, your whole Health Accelerator journey to, to just take your health from wherever you're currently at to the next level. Um, you can be an extreme good health or or poor health um this is for you so um get get in touch with that um our challenge for the week is getting one to two pounds of vegetables daily um and this this one that can be a tough one um but i it's like a game changer you feel so much better when you get a good amount of veggies in in the diet so i let my strategy like if we get a bunch of leafy greens and I don't have a lot of time, I just grab handfuls, put a little olive oil on it and stuff it in my face. It brings out like the Viking in me um, as <laughs> uh, it, it goes good with the beard, especially when there's olive oil all over it. It just, it adds a little extra flavor. So I enjoy that. Now um, hopefully everybody's getting a good laugh out of that one. All right, and uh, before we get started on today's show, um, Reagan's got some amazing content for us, um, but before we dive into that, I want to um, tell you guys about our summit that just started today. Um, I'm going to pull that up, and so everyone, make sure you get on this because it is a really cool, um, a really cool educational platform that that Reagan spent countless hours going through this. Um, Anne's going to post the link in the chat box here, um, but this is where we're interviewing experts in the pain, in uh, knee and back pain. So we have um, the Knee and Back Pain Solution Summit. It is going on this weekend. Um, there is some amazing stuff. It's free access um, for the live, and then there is some purchase os options on the recordings, but this is an amazing summit, amazing doctors are interviewed all the way from, you know, we have all across the nation where we're interviewing these, um, these um, experts in, uh, in different pain treatments from chiropractors, um, medical doctors, physicians, assistants, nurse practitioners. Um, there's, uh, there's some amazing uh, things that we go into. So check that out. And then uh, last thing before we get started, our, our show is brought to you by thesmartmedicine.com. Um, that is where you can pick up some of the most uh, innovative uh, supplements and nutritional products on the market, thesmartmedicine.com. Um, and yes, um, I, I, we don't have any studies to prove this, but it will make you smarter. So <laughs> um, without according further to ado, Cade, according to Cade, it will. According to my personal personal study that I did on myself, it does improve my intelligence a couple points at least, I, I believe. At least the inner genius, it feels nice. All right, so let, let's get started here, Reagan. I know you got some cool stuff prepared for some uh, post-COVID. We've, we've been seeing some patients come in with some post-COVID problems, and um, that's, that's something that's been on, on people's minds, so let's, let's dive in. Yeah, so, um, and we're going to cover a broad array of things, but the primary objective of today is to really give you some insights on these chronic infections and how our immune system works. And then, um, you know, we'll talk about neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, but really I want to share with you uh, peptides that have helped uncover healing for um, patients with Lyme. And I'll share with you a couple of case studies um, of some, some patients who have done phenomenal because, because first of all, how many of you have ever experienced a chronic infection? 
And I think more and more we're going to see this uh, population of, you know, post-COVID um, or co-infections um, creeping up as a major contributor to chronic disease. And so for those of you, if you have a family member, a loved one, um, coworker, whatever it may be, who might be struggling, we'll go get them and say, hey, we got, you know, Reagan's going to be rapping about this for about an hour today. So, so grab those people. And then for those of you who have not shared our show with somebody, the Your Healthy Self, um, go ahead and share that with somebody. Uh, you know, there's, there's an enormous benefit that comes into your life when you help someone get healthier and help someone find their own health independence. So, so share it with somebody because we are covering the topics and we dive in deeper than what you're going to find on most shows out there. So, so first of all, let's talk about the infectious disease and what's happened to our immune system. You know, first of all, our immune system is so much more complex than we make it out to be. If you think about the way that we look at our immune system right now, it's kind of like we use these militaristic terms. Have you noticed that, Cade? We, we've got natural killer cells, for example. Yeah, the T um, helper cells. T helper cells. You've got the immune defense system. And, and so we think that it's like this external system, almost like the United States military that's deployed all over the world and kind of you know, regulating things. But actually our immune system is a lot more integrated in all of our organs than what we realize. And so, you know, our white blood cells, you know, are made in part of our spleen, but they're also made in other systems, other parts of the body, like your thymus gland. But we're going to talk about, you know, how this whole immune system functions and how you can optimize and maximize it. Because, because this immune system, even though it's, it's interdependent from all your organ systems, well, it's one of the first things that starts to, to flounder and wave if your body is under chronic stress from uh, the EPIC, which uh, Misha, who's a genius in our office, she came up with that acronym EPIC. So the emotional stressor, the physical stressors, the infection stressors, and the stressors from chemicals, all of those things start to downregulate our immune system. And so we're going to talk about some of those. So, so Kate, if you look at the emotional stressors that exist, what are those emotional stressors that, that most people are suffering with right now that can start downregulating that, that immune defense? Yeah, I think it, really you think about um, your thought patterns and how you think about things. Um, that is like a huge, huge problem because you know, so many times we'll get you know, frustrated about something or we'll be concerned or worried and that just causes this whole cortisol effect where you're, you're creating more stress on your body. I think, um, yeah, that I can't remember the exact statistics, but they've done studies on when someone um, gets uh, angry at someone that yeah. physio, it affects your body physiologically. Um, yeah, you start to see your white blood cells actually start to tame and, and, and chronic anger, you actually have lower white blood cell counts overall. That, yeah, and that, that's just, it's fascinating, but it also shows how emotions, um, you know, and this can be, you know, some can be very simple, like, you know, someone frustrates you, you get road rage, something like that, or it could be, you know, you had a, a traumatic event as a child, um, it could be you had, um, you know, some people deal with, with divorce or abuse, all those different things can cause these, these emotional traumas that manifest in, in really poor health and disease. Yeah, and, and I think all of us have experienced stress and right. it's, it's, its impact on you, our you have a life. You're, you're going to have some stress, right? Yeah, well, if you have a brain, you're going to have some stress yeah. because our brain <laughs> is, is actually programmed to pick up on these things. And so um, one of the things that frustrates uh, many patients with chronic disease especially Hashimoto's, which we treat, you know, that's one of the primary conditions that we, we, we help people find answers to, uh, non-surgical solutions to, but it's that chronic stress that just drives our body lower and lower and lower. And so one of the, the ways that, that you can begin progress and one of the ways you can look at this is adding in some gratitude. And so I know I'm, I've been a, a big proponent of what I term the mindset morning, um, kind of using the, uh, there's, a, there's a whole process um, that, that I, I use for that, but it's, you know, figuring out the first five minutes of your day, just clearing your mind, 
getting your body ready for the day, just kind of priming your brain. The second five minutes, once the timer goes off, now you're writing down everything you're grateful for or you're reviewing everything you're grateful for. I found that writing it down every day, there's too many things like trying to force it. But when I just read everything I write that I'm grateful for, and then I'm like, oh, and I'm also grateful for this. And then it just keeps expanding. Timer goes off and then the next five minutes, now you're focused on what you want to accomplish for the day and you're visualizing yourself actually accomplishing that. It's a great time to take your supplements too or your peptides. You know, I'm doing my peptides like CJC 1295 from Morellin and I'm imagining my body thriving and my muscles growing and my blood sugar being perfectly regulated and my liver being completely healthy and my brain functioning optimally. So, so it's a good time to start putting supplements in your body or if you're using something like the smart medicine, I'll take my inner genius and then I'll just imagine my brain being just bright and turned on and super helpful in identifying where I can be creative and help people in problem solving and strategy. And so, uh, and, and, and this is all, you can do that every day. And then what some of the research shows is that just by having gratitude, um, you can start changing your white blood, blood cells. You can start stabilizing some of your neutrophils, your eosinophils, your basophils, and your lymphocytes, which are you know, really key components of your white blood cells. Um, so, so yeah, there's some little things you can do there. If you go down to the next tier, we talk about physical traumas. All of us have pain and our pain summit coming up is, is amazing. And Kate, I don't know how many of the interviews have you, have you seen any clips on the interviews that we've done or is this going to be brand new to you? Yeah, most of it's going to be brand new. I, I've seen, I saw a few little glimpses into Dr. S uh, Scott Frogley's interview that was really really insightful uh he's amazing guy um yeah. had some cool stuff going on in uh interventional pain management um yeah re really really rad stuff there um and then i was able to do one of the interviews with dr mark pierce so you you guys will get yeah. to see me on there as well um and he's got their their technique of um adjusting is really really interesting i i'd never even dove into that type of chiropractic care um, yeah just subtle like little movements in the atlas and axis is and it's vibration instead of like the typical hands-on they're using a, a vibration tool to to make that happen really really cool stuff yeah yeah so that that pain summit uh it's the knee and back pain uh summit and you guys will not want to miss that you know make sure you know we like Kate said, we put a lot of work into it, um, especially Anne. You know, we got to, you know, hey. Anne is the number one driver of the pain summit. Like, she deserves a full round of applause. Well done, Anne. It's hey, Anne. Awesome work there. Yeah, she That's pulled it off. She she was able to, uh, managing Reagan is like managing a, a room full of butterflies and so, and trying to direct them in one area. So she was, she did amazing at, and just being like, okay, Reagan, don't forget, now you got this. Cause you know, anytime you add something new to Reagan's schedule, it's uh, you know, the, the one more complexity in an already complex schedule can, it takes a lot of management. So Anna has been amazing. So really appreciate that, but, but don't miss that because the pain can also downregulate your immune function. And the crazy thing about that is there's been research that shows that people who have chronic pain also tend to have more chronic infection. And those chronic infection are what drives heart disease. Number one killer in our country. And you hear people say, yeah, the, well, one of the number one killers uh, of, uh, you know, or causes of heart disease are infections. And a lot of those infections start in your mouth and in your teeth. So shout out to uh, my favorite biological dentist, Dr. Peterson um, at the dental uh, studio um, in, uh, I think he's, it's in Sandy or Cottonwood Heights area, Union Park, uh, but he's, he's amazing. So, so there's a lot of things you want to look at. And then let's focus on infections. And that's where I'm going to spend the bulk of our time today. We'll talk about chemicals a little bit when we're looking at that epic process. Um, but while you're here, click on the link and get signed up for our free uh, pain series and you got free access to that over the weekend and we hope that it's it hope you'll learn some very interesting things even if you don't have pain you're going to learn how to move your body you're going to learn how to sit when you're driving your car uh, you're going to learn I mean I learned so many techniques about how to free up my shoulders 
um, I was getting coached by all the, the world's best. So really interesting, but, but let's talk about infection. So one of the biggest challenges that we've seen in, in this era, you know, it's 2021 right now. Some of you will be listening to this three, four years later, but we're, we're learning that these chronic lingering infections are a big deal to our immune system. And some of the markers that we're looking for when it comes to infections are all of your white blood cells. Now there's five core white blood cells in one of my great friends, uh, Dan Kellams, who's also um, somebody who is uh, interviewed on our, our, our pain summit. And Dan's, Dan's talk was so fascinating because he tied in the correlation between pain and hormonal imbalance. And he's a fertility specialist but he's the one that taught me this acronym. It's never let mom eat bananas. And you guys are like, well, that's a weird acronym. What does that mean? Well, that means this is, these are the white blood cells. So you can remember this order because it shows up on your lab. So grab your labs. If you've had your test ran with us recently, if you've not had any recent labs in the last six months, we do recommend get your full comprehensive panel run every six months. Your life is too valuable and your health is too critical to take risks and not know what's going on. So never let mom eat bananas. Kay, do you remember that acronym, acronym at all? Or is this brand new? Okay, so I won't put you on the spot. So this is, so we're never gonna let mom eat bananas again. As close attention as I possibly can when Dan's around, but man, he just spills knowledge and it's like, I might retain like 10% of it. <laughs> I feel brilliant after that, so. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. He's great. So never let mom eat bananas is neutrophils and neutrophils is, is should be the, the highest quantity of white blood cells. And each of these white blood cells are differentiated to perform a different function. So if we're using the military terms, which, you know, is not completely accurate, but the neutrophils are that front line of defense. So they're like all the ground soldiers that are looking for bacterial infections. And neutrophils are really critical because if you have a high level of neutrophils in your blood, then you're gonna know you've got some type of active acute infection. Um, so neutrophils, if neutrophils get low, then that means there, you might have some type of viral infection, not necessarily bacterial. And so the military is putting its energy in a different division, you know, because I think right now we have, you know, we have the Air Force, the Navy, and then the Army. And then we have all the special ops. Now, what's that? Space Force. That's the newest one. What's it called? Space Force. Space Force. Yes. Oh, I didn't. Even, I didn't even know about that. What? Tell me about that. Uh, they they do space. I, I have no knowledge other than it's a new arm of the of the military, the Space Force. So. Well, it makes sense because Elon Musk is putting so many satellites out yeah. there. You think you're looking at stars and then it moves and you're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, so that, I guess that's that would make a lot of sense. We need to protect the satellites because that's communication and and then people can hack the satellites. And OK, wow. Yeah. Well, there there we go. So we'll probably find another division in our immune cells at some stage. But um, but yeah, the neutrophils, those are those are a big one. Lymphocytes. So remember, never let. So the L is for lymphocytes, the N is for neutrophils. So your lymphocytes, they comprise of a large portion of your immune system, but you got about half of the lymphocytes in a normal functioning immune system that you would have neutrophils. And these lymphocytes are there to primarily detect when there's viral infections. So when you've got these low grade viral infections, so for those of you who have elevated lymphocytes, you may wanna consider looking at, um, you know, especially if you've had COVID, get your labs ran and you may have some kind of chronic lingering, you know, either like an infection that's, that's kind of down-regulating your body if you don't have your sense of smell or taste back yet. Uh, maybe you're feeling a little bit of brain fog and you're not quite recovered. And, and I know we've got several patients coming in for that right now. Um, some of our patients we've seen, the lymphocytes can be slightly elevated um, post vaccine because you know one of the, the, the ways the spike protein does is it activates uh, some of your lymphocytes and it tr is triggering that uh, kind of mast cell activation or a cytokine storm. And so you can have some of the fallout and, and sickness from that. And most people, it goes away after 24 hours, but we've seen some where it's, it's lingered much longer, especially those 
you know, now the, the, you know, some of the studies are showing in the, the CDC even is that if you've had COVID and you have the vaccine, then you can have some of those lingering uh, side effects, those, you know, viral side effects uh, long after, you know, long, more, more time, more duration than someone who has not had the vaccine. So, so it's something to look at in your lab. So you look at the lymphocytes and you say, okay, well, we need to get those lymphocytes harmonized and especially with the uh, Epstein-Barr virus. So if you had mono when you're a kid, cytomegaly virus, if you've had hepatitis, um, any type of um, uh, you know, chronic disease, herpes simplex, the, this number might be elevated when that virus starts to replicate because in Chinese medicine, there's this, this concept that, that the viruses can go into the middle layer and they had this concept like 400 years ago, which is pretty interesting, but they called it a lingering pathogen where the pathogen goes quiescent. So it doesn't replicate, it just finds a pocket in your body. And this is where it builds a biofilm, like with Lyme disease, you get the spirochetes that kind of hide under the biofilm. And, and then once the body has the right environment, this pathogen starts to replicate. And so the interesting thing about viruses is they're so tiny. Kate, I don't know if you remember this analogy, but if, if we had this, the Empire State Building and that, that represented a bacteria, a virus would be a ping pong ball. Wow, it's that small? That small. I knew it was smaller. I didn't realize it was that, that, yeah. uh, that different though. That's uh, really small. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, because we think bacteria, we can't see it with our eyes. I mean, viruses are even tiny, tiny particle, uh, just messenger RNA. It's just carrying a message and then it carries that message into the DNA of, of the cell and then it can disassemble the signal of the cell. And then that's where you start getting sick because that disassembling of the, the proper expression of that cell, now the virus's only job is it wants to send its message. So it's kind of like spam email in some cases where it's just trying to spam, spam things like crazy. And you're like, I don't want this email. Why does it keep showing up? And then you open it and then boom, you know, we have all had viral infections in our computer and it's, it's not fun, but it's no different. But there are some viruses that are actually super helpful. And they come in and they say, well, Reagan, you need to start the, you know, things are changing, the weather patterns are changing or whatever it is. So a virus will come in and reprogram our cells and about 50% of our over, uh, overall genome has been um, orchestrated by viruses. So really, yeah. help. what's I, that? We listened, to, we listened to that podcast um, like the, last year. What, who was the doctor that, that explained that whole process? Um, um, you're, I, I don't know. There's <laughs> on COVID, but. Um, I, I think he was on the uh, the London Rail podcast, but yeah, it was okay. really fascinating. Zach Bush. Yeah, Zach Bush. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that and that's you know that's something that you know the the virome is there's some really healthy benefits you know in soil uh, you'll find the virome you'll find it in animals and the plant kingdom so they're not all bad but but one of the things you want to look at if you have a chronic viral infection is it's kind of like it's a slow drain so bacterial infections, you're going to notice you'll, you wake up and your lymphs are swollen. You, you can feel them in your groin area. You can feel them under your pits, you know, even in the chest area and in your throat, especially maybe behind the ears. Um, that's when you know you probably have a, a pretty chronic bacterial infection. But if the virus is in high replication mode, you'll find that the lymph nodes get really chronically inflamed as well. So something to look at. And one of the things you can do is jump on the trampoline on a regular basis. You can do dry brushing. Um, you can get on our whole body vibration plate when you're here getting your chiropractic adjustment or acupuncture treatments. Um, these are great things. And then enough, what, what's that kid? Uh, I, I didn't say anything, but I, I think acupuncture is another way to really, really help release some of those infections. Yep, any kind of body work is gonna be so good. And then some of the best peptides um, that you can use are like the thymosin. So thymosin beta-4, uh, thymosin alpha-1, um, we're still having a challenge getting that. The FDA has asked the compounding pharmacies to not compound it because there is a big pharma owns the patent on zidatazin. 
Um, and so that is the prescriptive um, form of thymosin alpha-1. So unfortunately, um, we're still looking for a, a great source of that, but that's one of our favorite peptides. But there's other great peptides, you know, so, so um, especially when we're dealing with somebody who has like, you know, uh, the long haul symptoms uh, from COVID, you know, how can we get their body recovered, whether they've been vaccinated or not? Um, we want to say, okay, what can we do to really get things stabilized when we look at these markers? Um, and maybe I'll go through a little bit of a case study uh, now, Cade, would, would that be a good time now? And then we can go through the rest of these uh, white blood cells. Yeah, I think that, that'd be really cool. Okay, so so if we look at, uh, we had a patient come in, he's 44. Um, he had a tick bite uh, on the East Coast, uh, somewhere in New York. Um, and in that tick bite, it had the classic bullseye. Uh, sure enough, he went and got um, tested and diagnosed and he had uh, Lyme. So he had the, you know, they, they identified it as he had uh, the Bobesia type of, of Lyme of those spirochetes. And it was really starting to impact him because uh, he owned several businesses, entrepreneurial, but he wasn't able to form thoughts. Um, he, he owns uh, these auto body shops. And he couldn't quite um, pull things together. He couldn't, you know, in the past, he liked to tinker with cars and, and do things with his hands, but his joints got so inflamed, he couldn't grip things. And so, um, so it really impacted him, not only from a mental perspective, because the, those, those spirochetes like to bury themselves in fatty deposits and fatty tissue. But the other place where um, these, these uh, infections can go is in our joints, because there's not a lot of blood supply in our joints. So they can go in there and they can escape the wrath of the military, right? They're like, they're kind of like uh, Osama bin Laden who was like stuck in a cave somewhere. And it's like, all right, hard to find him, not a great quality of life. So I don't know how long you want to wait for us to find you, but good luck down there. But that's that's kind of what they're doing to escape the the wrath of our, our, our military, our immune military. And so, um, so he was struggling and I met him and he'd been going undergoing these treatments uh, for two years. So he went on a year long cycle of antibiotics and uh, he was put on some steroids and things to calm the pain. Uh, but he just felt like he wasn't thriving. He couldn't, he, his energy levels were down. He was getting depressed. And what I noticed too is, is that there was just an overall inability to form words. And then I actually talked to him about that because the thought, you know, between a sentence being able to articulate, you know, what he wanted to say, there's just such a delay. And then looking for words, you know, in, in a way it felt like you're talking to an 85 year old person who um, is, you know, having some, some struggle with, you, you know, just articulation and dementia, um, you know, not like it would be like the president or anything like that, but, you know, similar. So, um, so, so it was interesting when we were talking, <laughs> joking there, um, interesting when we were talking because um, I found that there's uh, just a bit of despair because he felt like I'm just going to have to learn to live with this for the rest of my life. And I think, I think, Cade, you'd have to agree that that's one of the biggest myths that we see is that people feel like, man, I'm, I'm never going to get answers for this because he's working with top Lyme specialists. And then when I mentioned to him, I said, well, let's take a step back. And instead of focusing on the Lyme, why don't we focus on getting the pathways open in your body that can actually help you get rid of the problem for good? And then he perked up and he said, well, let's talk about that. And so this is, the, this is when I said, well, look, our, our medical team is phenomenal. What we do is we take you through three phases of care. The very first thing we have to do is remove those biofilms and remove the barriers that are getting in the way of your immune system from actually cultivating more intelligence. So when we ran his blood work, sure enough, his lymphocytes were elevated, rock bottom neutrophils, his monocytes were elevated and his eosinophils. So we knew, and, and he did struggle with some allergies as well and possible parasites, which we talked about in, in his eosinophils. And so as interesting as we took him through a process, very first thing we did is put him on thymosin alpha one. That was, you know, this was, a few months ago and we started working with him and we put him on thymosin alpha one we put him on epitalin to reset that hpa axis because he was so stressed about not being able to work and perform as a, as a business owner um and not only that but just super stressed about not being able to sleep being in pain all the time so his cortisol levels 
you know, we grade people, we give you a percentage of how well your adrenals are functioning on, you know, we have 25% functional, 50% functional, 75 or hundred percent functional. If, if your whole circadian rhythms are within the green, his all were outside of the green. They were all in the red or off the charts. Oh, so he's like 0%. We gave him, we said, sorry, you're going to have to take this class over. You are way too stressed and you didn't get anything out of all the the, the meditation or whatever. So, so yeah, zero on the, on the adrenals. And then his gut was wrecked. You know, when we looked at his absorption issue, he had malabsorption. We looked at dysbiosis. He was an eight out of 10 on dysbiosis. We looked at the inflammatory markers. He was a nine out of 10 in inflammatory markers. And so we said, man, this is not going to be helpful. He scored out of 50 points on the gut profile. And Kate, you know how we score people on their gut. Um, he basically was functioning at, a, at, at about 40 positive findings out of 50. So he was 20% functional in his gut. Yeah, so. that's rough. So he just had chronic, chronic gut infections. His cortisol was completely out of whack. I mean, it all started from a little, uh, a little tick bite. Little bitty, little bitty, bitty tick that you know, you, we don't even see those in so many cases. And, and so, um, yeah, but, but the problem is then he got the treatment and as you know, the, there's part, a, of the, part of his problem probably could be a lot of those antibiotics. You go on the antibiotics for a year and that just can destroy the, the, that creates dysbiosis. Exactly. And that was the problem is uh, he was on that strategy for a year and then he'd go on heavy, like real powerful antibiotics and then off them, then on them and off them. And there wasn't a lot of thought to the terrain. And so I think that's the big mistake that we make when we have these chronic infections, no different than COVID or influenza or any other treatment. Unfortunately, in Western medicine, Western medicine has this militaristic view of the body where it's like, Let's, let's seek and destroy. Gallbladder's not functioning, send in the surgeon. We're gonna destroy it and we're just gonna yank it out of your body and flush it down the toilet and, and shoot it with the machine gun before we do it. So <laughs> this, we're gonna lose a few listeners on this one. <laughs> okay, so, all right, I'll try to ease my analogies a bit, but essentially, yeah, appendix rupture. It's actually a beautiful analogy because yeah, to your point, um, you know, Western medicine is like, okay, you have Lyme disease. So here is our Lyme protocol and we're going to do antibiotics and we're going to do steroids, all these things. But yeah, that might take care of that Lyme symptom or that, that Lyme issue momentarily, but then that destroys all the under, unders of your health. So your gut, your, your cortisol levels, your adrenals get fried by by uh, cortisone or steroids. Yep. So yeah, that, that makes sense that he'd have so many different imbalances all over his body. Yeah, it really was a struggle. And, and unfortunately, like we we're looking at COVID no different. It's like, get rid of the virus as quick as possible, get a vaccine in every human as we can, every human being around. And then when somebody comes up with a study and they say, oh, by the way, uh, vitamin D has been shown to be helpful or glutathione, especially glutathione nebulized. Oh, that seems to be really helpful or add some zinc. And then, then all the officials, the government officials are like, whoa, 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 whoa. You cannot treat disease with those things. And, and these things do not treat the disease. It's like, well, that's not what, that was not our intention. Our intention is let's maximize health. We're not focused on disease. And that's exactly what I told uh, this patient. I said, well, look, um, if you work with us, we're not going to be focusing on, I like the Lyme, if it's Epstein-Barr, which he also had uh, Epstein-Barr viral loads, which were high. It's like, okay, those things aren't nearly as important as focusing on the health. And so then we started using peptides to open up the pathways to actually allow his body to heal because he was also working on a natural route and he was taking all these herbs to start help, helping improve his digestion and his motility and his, you know, taking probiotics. But unfortunately, when you're swallowing those through a digestive system that's non-functional, you just, you're not getting the full benefits of anything that you're taking. And that's where peptides are brilliant because they go in and there and just like a virus goes in and gives the DNA a new message, whether that's good or bad, it's, you know, 
Um, peptides do the same thing, but they work on the surface side of the cell and they're just, they're almost like sending in little, little nano robots to help just fine tune the DNA. It's like sending in really intelligent workers and said, oh, hey, this gene is not expressed. Let's just turn on these light switches. It's like sending someone throughout your house and saying, no, the reason you can't see is because this switch is off and this switch is off. Oh, and you need to turn this one down. Let's turn that one down. Let's regulate this one. And so just one peptide pathway can open up a thousand different pathways of healing in your body. I love that. You were you full of some, some pretty brilliant analogies today. Are you just coming up with these on the spot or you yeah, really I, got this through? This is just That's straight. It's, you're, you've heard it first, folks. This is just straight, <laughs> this is straight <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> I've, I've never heard the lights. I've heard like how peptides go in and they can help uh, maximize, uh, really intelligent on maximizing DNA. But I love the light switch analogy where it's like, yeah, they, it's just, you, you get this whole host of, of additional people to help manage your house, to turn on the lights in the right locations, get the lighting primed and perfect. That's, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, so I mean, and, and the nice thing about that is even in studies, they've tried to give animals a thousand times the, the prescribed dose of these peptides. No lethal dose has ever been established. Your body discards what it doesn't need. It's not like a hormone or a medication that's, that's just manipulating the cell and saying, hey, you do as I tell you. And we're just, we're changing all the osmolarity here. Um, or it's like an antibiotic that's like, here's the machine gun. We just dropped a nuclear bomb in your gut. We're going to drop another one tomorrow, the next day, the next for a full year. Um, right? So peptides are just going in there, cleaning it up. So we got them on BPC-157. And you guys probably know by now, that's what we call the Wolverine peptide because it is so good at healing those intestinal barriers, leaky gut, leaky brain, leaky lungs. Right when we got him on BPC, we were doing the injections. Um, he's noticed that his brain fog diminishedly, in, like in, increased and diminished substantially. So it improved, excuse me, it improved, it diminished substantially. And he said, he, finally, he's like, oh, I can actually form a sentence without stopping three words in and trying to look for the next word. So well, that's incredible. Yeah. Just healing that leaky brain. And a lot of people don't realize that if you have leaky gut, uh, you're going to have leaky brain as well and leaky lungs, you know, which is chronically getting other types of pathogens. So, so this was really critical. And then phase two, we put them on LL 37. You remember that peptide kid is, is yeah, so that that helps, um, does it help weed out infections or bacteria? Yeah, so it breaks the biofilms. The biofilms, that's so right. Remember the, the, the lime is hiding and these pathogens are no different than any animal or plant species. They all have ways of being really covert. Like you look at a, a mountain lion and you can't see them on the mountain unless they're moving, right? Because they're camouflage. Deer are camouflage until they move. That's how these, these pathogens are. They're hovering under the biofilm. And then once they've created enough momentum and they have the environment where they can come out, they open up that tent and start circulating. So what the LL37 does is it's, a, it's an antimicrobial secretome. It actually is a natural secretome from your stem cells. But what, what the labs have been able to do is put this peptide sequence together and then that LL37 can go in there and find the biofilms when your body has a strong enough environment to actually fight back and eradicate it, start kicking it out. So, you know, it's kind of like getting rid of the homeless camps and say, all right, we're going to, we're going to get some therapy for everyone to put you back to work. So um, really cool. So LL37, we got him on that one, kept him on Epital and kept him on Thymosin Alpha 1 to keep his, his HPA axis balanced. So he's not super stressed. So he's sleeping better. And then the Thymosin Alpha 1 to help activate those lymphocytes. And suddenly he starts seeing a big difference. And phase three is when we actually started working on, we got, you know, so we repaired the connective tissue. One of the other peptides he was on was, is, uh, was BPC, or excuse me, I mentioned that one, but with thymus and beta four. And, and that one is another one, it's angiogenic, but it heals damage in tissues. So anytime you've had chronic infection or your cortisol levels are off, you got to go in there and you got to repair the damage. Kind of like when you've had a war in your body um, or, you know, you, you're, since we're on the military terms, we'll just say, you know, Afghanistan, right? I mean, a lot of it was, was completely destroyed. So now it's like, let's repair it and let's build it back up or any other place in the world where there's been war. I mean, you go to Europe and you can see churches where 
you know, uh, the military, you know, whatever military it was, usually it was uh, Germany, Hitler, um, the Nazis had destroyed part of these gorgeous edifices. And then you can see where they, they tried to match it perfectly, but you can see where there's like a hundred year difference in the stone structure or sometimes 500 years. And so no different in the body, you got to repair it. And then the third phase is where you actually make it so it's maintained and it's shiny and that that church just always is there as a, you know, a test of time. So it's, you know, you're constantly reinforcing the foundation, like the Salt Lake Temple, um, you know, where I think it's a seven year renovation. You look at the the uh, LDS Temple in Salt Lake, it's gorgeous. But right now, the, the main parts are gone. You know, there's no Angel Moroni. There's no like the spears are gone because they're they're reinforcing the whole thing. What a process. But that's like a phase three where you're like, hey, we've got this really beautiful temple. We're going to keep it regenerating all the time so that in 100 years from now, it looks just as good as it does today, if not better. So so that's where we take people into phase three. Love that. They're, they're doing that down in St. George as well with the St. George Temple. It they, they took out a lot, but now it's like they started. You can tell they repainted it. It looks like bright and vibrant. I like that. And now you're just full of good, good analogies today. Man, you took your inner genius this morning. I took my inner genius, as a matter of fact, that, that is a true statement. And so we're going to give give a credit where credit's due for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Sorry. I, I mean, they're just coming. It's just a, it's kind of like uh, a, a rapper when they get on stage. Sometimes they're on, sometimes they're not. So I guess today we're on with analogies. So <laughs> All right, so now we're moving in. So on phase three, this was the most important. So this took about 90 days, phase one, phase two. You know, we're doing testing. There's some lifestyle changes. We, we didn't use a lot of supplements. We used some. We found his DHEA was really low. And all of you who want to maximize your immune system, DHEA is the primary hormone that helps regulate and keeps the military calm. The worst thing you can have is a military that gets chaotic and they lose their pose, right? They, their composure. What's that? They get trigger happy. You don't want to trigger happy. They get trigger happy. They start fighting amongst themselves. They get really amped up. And that's where we see a lot of people getting these, these cytokine storms or the mast cell activation. You know, it's, it's not necessarily the, the, the initial infection that, that gets people or the virus replicating. It's the way that the immune system responds to that replication. And that's what kills people. Yeah. So, so right. just always remember, remain calm. And they've done studies, you know, especially in 2020, they're finding, well, what, what is some of the, the mortality factors? And they found that cortisol dysregulation, they found that when someone got infected, if they had a high level of stress going into the hospital, which people had a massively way higher level of stress than they should have, they're you know they're freaking out because there's no treatment. You're gonna die. That's that's what the media told us all. The, the media told us all, and there's some great, phenomenal doctors on the front lines who's like, "We got this figured out. We're doing great things." And we learned a lot. And we shifted and pivoted. And so my hats off to the healthcare workers, but um, but they found that people who had the highest spikes in cortisol. And then they had the lowest drops when the cortisol dropped and that's where their immune system went into this mast cell activation. And so, um, because cortisol and white blood cells are directly proportional they're they're out there surveying cortisol goes up, white blood cells, you know, cortisol's out, military's out. It's kind of like the general of the army is like, is like doing his surveillance in their secret service and they're, they're intercepting messages from Russia or wherever. And then they're like, okay, let's, you know, we, you know, so now we got to get the ground troops ready because now there's a threat. And so, um, so really what you want to do is make sure that your body is going through these natural circadian rhythms. And that's what our hacks are all designed to do is to keep you in a place where you're not so explosive and reactive to everything. So we got him in phase three and phase three, once we've fixed phase one, the removal phase two, the repair phase three is the rejuvenation and the restoration phase, but it's also the regeneration phase. And that's where we put him on some of the growth hormone releasing peptides. And he sent me a picture and he said, look at my calves before, look at them after within a month, nice. his, his muscles had actually grown in his calves. He said, I'm just showing you a picture of my calf because it's going to be weird if I send you one with my shirt off. I like, I agree. Um, but, but yeah, you could see a definite uh, difference in the calves. 
And so I said, this is, this is great. And I realized that that is, um, you know, the, this, this growth hormone, when that starts to kick in, your body starts behaving as if it's younger. His body was being assaulted every day for years, you know, just being chronically assaulted and it just triggered more of a, a defense attack. And instead of playing the defense, it's like, let's play the offense and let's just open up the pathways and let's start moving the ball around on the other side of the court and score some points instead of always just trying to be on the defense. And that's ultimately how he won the game. Um, now he's got freedom in his hands. He still has to take care of his health. You know, he, he noticed if he drinks too much, um, you know, if he goes out on a bender, the symptoms start to come back. If he doesn't get a lot of sleep, symptoms start to come back. He's, he's made himself, his life, he's been able to find a lifestyle where he can live without the symptoms of the Lyme. And I think all of us um, can learn from that because, you know, it's, it's your choices and your day-to-day -day habits that make the biggest difference. It's not some big treatment that's going to, you know, help heal your immune system or clear any chronic infections. There's never one thing. It's not one vaccine that's going to keep you safe. It's like, it's these small lifestyle changes every day, the way you think, the way you move your body, the food you're putting in, the way you breathe, the hydration that you get or don't get, all those things are going to influence your health much more than even peptides will or any of the cool medicines that are out there. And re realize that, that there are ways that you can turn that on. And that's what we learned with him. That's what we've learned with hundreds of other patients. But I thought that would be kind of an interesting story. So I'm going to open it up to questions, Kate, questions that you have or the audience now. Yeah, no, I just, I have a few comments. So on, when you're looking at the, the epic uh, process, so eliminating the emotional, physical um, infection and chemical traumas, I think um, you, you talked about the, um, uh, the, the start of your day. So the, the morning, my, Morning, mindset. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Um, I, I haven't taken my inner genius this morning, so <laughs> a little slower. Um, I left it at home. <laughs> so, um, but mindset morning, like I, I just think that's a beautiful process to start the day off, right? Um, I think you know, there's you have this, um, you know, if you can start with good positive intentions and then visualize how you're, you're going to improve on your health. Cause I think to your point, Reagan, um, you know, these, there's all these horror stories in the media about, you know, what, what, whether it's COVID or other diseases or, or even just you Google, if you have Hashimoto's or thyroid issues or different autoimmune conditions. And it's just, um, it's like scary. Yeah. Um, all the, all the, all the different problems. And so, if you can start off with the right mindset, get your get your emotional state really solid, and then move into to lifestyle choices that like, really are promoting your health as opposed to diminishing your health. Because to your point uh, on this patient, you know he noticed you know if he, he goes and drinks a lot, he just feels pretty crappy. And you know intuitively we're like yeah that makes sense, but. Um, there's different ways how you can still, you know, you, you want to maintain a, a healthy and, and balanced lifestyle. And if you're doing the right things consistently, if you decide to, you know, maybe do a, a few things here and there, that's where the 80% rule really can come into play. But you know, to get there, you really have to um, have to follow that process really uh, pretty well. Yeah. Um, starting with the right intentions is, is great. Yeah, and I think the community that I just want to thank everyone who's in the hat community, you know, Diane uh, Trout last night, she posted, we have our vegetable challenge and she posted the most beautiful plate. I wanted to eat her dinner last night because it was like, there's like seven different vegetables, some great, you know, I think it was grass or organic. Uh, it seemed like it was chicken, but it was like some organic chicken and it just looked gorgeous. And so everybody's sharing in like these health habits. And so Oh, there it is right there. Kate's showing it on the screen. Isn't that gorgeous? That is gorgeous. Look at all those colors too. Yeah. yeah. All the spectrums. All the phytonutrients there, but we have this, just a great community to support each other. And so I'm going to give everyone the challenge. Like, remember, if you have infections or if you're worried about, you know, chronic disease, Hashimoto's, whatever name you've been given diagnosis wise, 
the worst thing you can do is just get triggered about it and just go crazy and just focus on the one narrow thing where you're focused on that disease. Do not focus on the disease, focus on your overall health. That's the, that's the primary message of today. And we've seen it in our Lyme patients. We've seen it with our Hashimoto's because all you Hashimoto's patients, you know, you've got Epstein-Barr virus. And so, you know, we virtually have not ran a single patient unless their Epstein-Barr virus is low, but you know, you can almost correlate over 90% of Epstein-Barr virus with, with Hashimoto's and there's so many other things. So, so these are real critical. And, and the, the hacks are really helpful because in the EPIC process, they handle the C. So I guess the C, the C is chemicals. And so some of the chemical exposures that we, you know, we'll touch on briefly. Um, glyphosate is, is one of the, the most harsh chemicals out there when it comes to our body's overall health. Because glyphosate is a registered antibiotic. Um, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. So it, it, it shuts off the enzymes that allow weeds to proliferate. So, so it's really important when you think about uh, higher crop yields and, and there's a great argument there. And I'm not opposed to doing some, some you know, making sure that we've got some incredible uh, technologies available. But glyphosate, unfortunately, it turns off what's called the, the cytochrome P450 gene in our liver. And what that means, Kate, is your liver now can't detoxify. And so any other chemicals that you get exposed to, I mean, you breathe the air, you walk into your house, outside of your house, you know, you got inversions, we got fires now. Um, these things, you're going to breathe in these chemicals and pollution, but your liver can't metabolize those because that, that cytochrome P450 gene is turned off. The other thing that happens is you don't metabolize estrogens. And so then you get this toxic burden of, of these, these estrogens in your body that your body can't use. And so they just go get stored in fat cells. And so the chemical processes is another big thing. I mean, you hear one of our challenges was get rid of processed foods, right? Anything in a bag, start reading, you know, there's all these emulsifiers, there's fillers, and you want to get rid of those things, you know, best you can get rid of the plastics. And when you do that, you actually start creating a better health in your liver. So you can circumvent some of the chemical exposure. And we could do a whole show on chemical exposure, but today I just wanted to kind of end with that because that's our epic process. If you remove those four things, you know, get rid of the emotional trauma. And I used to tell people that if we can't get rid of stress, you know, naturally we'll just give you a frontal lobotomy and that's still an option. So <laughs> just, to, just yeah, all just, your problems go away. Yeah. Your personality goes with them, but um, you know, we'll miss, we'll miss you, but you'll still be alive. Right. But no, that's, yeah. you know, but be, beyond that, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do emotionally more than you could ever imagine. Remember, don't be the explosive army, the explosive military that just is trigger happy and freaked out because then it starts fighting amongst itself. Um, the physical traumas, make sure you get on our pain summit. That's, that's come, that's today. Um, so get registered for that. And a few of you already have. So awesome, Bev. I'm so glad you got registered for that. So congrats, everybody. Um, and then um, there's the infections. So treat infections, whether it's COVID or whatever the next pandemic is. Um, remember to focus on your health more than you focus on the disease. Real critical. And then the chemicals. Never, never let your mother eat bananas. And then, yes, and, and the chemicals. So all this will keep your mom from eating bananas, right, Cade? So yes. if you do all the things we shared today, your mom will never eat bananas and <laughs> you're going to be so happy because of that. <laughs> and, and hopefully if you're joining us uh, a little bit late and you don't understand that acronym, it's, uh, it's for all the immune markers. Yes, neutrophils, never. Lymphocytes, let. And then let never let mom monocytes. Eat is eosinophils. And then bananas is basophils. So. <laughs> awesome well this has been great Cade thanks so much for um uh being here and and any final words for our audience yeah so um as uh Ann's gonna post the uh summit registration link one more time make sure you guys get registered for that um I I don't know if we have a simple url um for those uh listener onlys um but and maybe if we have a, a simple link Let's see, it's uh, rarchibald. 
yeah, I'm not even going to try to try to give you guys that for over the radio, but at least get registered for our hacks. Um, if you're not the health accelerator course, this is AccuEastWest.com forward slash hack H A C. Um, go there and you can register. It's a free um, weekly um, uh, event as well as community access to our, uh, we have a, a signal group that it's just amazing to communicate with. Um, and then lastly is um, uh, just our, our sponsor of the, the podcast is thesmartmedicine.com. Go there, grab some inner genius um, for, uh, for the brain, grab some stem boost, some good uh, plant brain, uh, some good protein and, and immune enhancing uh, mushroom blend. Yep. And, uh, have an amazing day. We'll be back same time, same place next week. And I uh, love you all. Bye-bye.